Who was pursuing who? God was pursuing Adam. God was calling Adam. God didn't just suddenly stop coming to the garden because Adam sinned. God pursued Adam and Adam hid. One thing have I desired of the Lord. That will I seek after, that I may dwell in the house of the Lord all the days of my life. But he didn't stop there. He's like, I want to dwell in the house of the Lord with a purpose. He's like, there's a reason I want to dwell in the house of the Lord. He's like, to behold the beauty of the Lord and to inquire in his temple. He's like, I'm not just coming to church, but I have a purpose behind what I'm doing. He's like, I want to see that beauty. I want to see that beauty. And there's beauty in the sanctuary. The question is, who will see that beauty? Who will see that beauty? Who is the one to see that beauty? And that's what I just want to leave you with today. Go to Isaiah chapter 33. Because who shall see the beauty of the king? Say, I will. Say, I will. Hallelujah. That is the question. David said, I want to behold the beauty of the king. But who else will see that beauty? Is it just David? No, it's not. Psalms, thir uh, sorry, Isaiah 33, 14 to 17. And let's go there really quickly. It says, the sinners in Zion are afraid. Fearfulness has surprised the hypocrites. Can I tell you something? Many look at the wicked Many look at what's going on and they say, why is this person doing so well? Why are the good things happening to them? You know that was Asaph's problem? He said, he said I'd almost completely lost my way. But you know when it changed for him? How many of you know when it changed for Asaph? He was envying the wicked. He said, I was jealous of the wicked. But when did it change for him? When he went to the house of the Lord. When he went to the sanctuary, when he came to church, something shifted in his perspective. He saw something. And so it's easy to look at the wicked and to look at their material beauty and their fleeting success. But look at what happened. It says, suddenly the sinners are afraid. Fearfulness came over the hypocrites. It says, who among us shall dwell with the devouring fire? Who among us shall dwell with the everlasting burning? I wish I could show you some of the other versions, but you see the, the everlasting fire. Wow. Who can dwell with the everlasting fire? Verse 15. Quickly. It says, those who walk righteously and who speak what is right, who reject gain from extortion and keep their hands from accepting bribes, who stop their ears against plots of murder and shut their eyes, don't change the scripture yet, and shut their eyes against contemplating evil. Really quickly, I want you to see a few things here. Number one, say walk. Say walk. It says those who walk righteously. The very first thing, and as you're going to begin to see, who can dwell with the everlasting fire is those who walk righteously. Those who walk right. What's your lifestyle? What's your lifestyle? You can't be fornicating one day and then coming to church the next, clapping your hands and saying, praise you, Lord. Because at the end of the day, you're deceiving yourself. You're hurting yourself is a deception one thing that i will tell you is the bible says worship the lord in the beauty of holiness and then in another scripture it says worship the beauty of his holiness can i tell you something there's something very beautiful here the more you see of god the more of his holiness you perceive the more of that beauty you perceive the more he calls you to holiness that's why what was okay when you, were a, when you were a new believer, if you want to grow closer to God, if you want to see more of that beauty, you want to enter into a better relationship, when the more holiness he shows you, the more holiness he calls you to. 
Wow. <laughs> Can I, do I need to say that again? The more of his holiness that you are shown, the more he expects you to push into holiness. Because without holiness, none shall see the Lord. So you need something working to change the lifestyle. Because if you try and do it on your own, in your own will, there was something, Papa, I don't know if you remember this teaching, but I remember from many years ago, and it just blessed me so much, because the kind of person that I am, I'm going to round up shortly, I know everyone's like, he's getting into his preaching mode. The kind of person that I am is, I like efficiency. Like, I, I want to know what's the most I can do in the least possible way. That's, that's just how I am. And I remember you talking about the magnet and the nails. Do you remember? You're like, many people are trying to pick up, like they're trying to deal with sin by going with one nail after another. One second you're dealing with fornication, then you're dealing with drinking, then you're dealing with smoking. Then next thing you know, it's lust, then it's pride, then you know, then there's a pride you didn't know that you had. Then you realize, huh, I never knew I was jealous. Then you're dealing with jealousy and envy. And it's like, there are so many that it's almost like the more you pick up, the more you you discover and it's frustrating and he just said something he's like do you know what righteousness does righteousness is like a magnet that when you bring it to all those all those spills all those messy areas of life when you bring the magnet to it you're not picking up one by one anymore it deals with everything in one go Hallelujah. And so you want to see more of God. You want to behold this beauty. You want to stop doing things on willpower and doing it by his righteousness. Because righteousness changes your desire. So look at this. It says, those who walk righteously, live righteously. So your feet. Number two, speak what is right. Your mouth. How many of you know that your mouth needs to be sanctified too? There are some things. The Bible says, how can blessing and curse come out of the same mouth? How can, how, how can you be calling uh, your wife dumb and stupid and foolish or, or calling a woman foolish and, and expect beauty to come out of that? How, how, can, how can your mouth have cursing and all these kind of things and then you expect to now go and to bless? That's not how it works. So your mouth who reject gain from extortion, that's integrity and character, who keep their hands from accepting bribes. How many of you know that if you put your hands in the wrong thing, it can destroy your work? Righteousness covers the hands. And then stop their ears against plots of murder. You know what that means? There are some things that you don't listen to. There are some things you don't listen to. There are some, there are some voices that you must silence. And then eyes against contemplating. Righteousness covers all of this. Righteousness covers your hands. It covers your feet. It covers your ears. It covers your eyes. Job said, I'll make a covenant with my eyes that I should not look lustfully upon a woman. There are some things that you just don't look upon. Verse 16, really quickly. He shall dwell on high. His place of defense shall be the munitions of the rocks. Other versions say fortress. You are fortified. Righteousness fortifies you. Bread shall be given him. His water shall be sure. Provision, health. Yes, and 17 says, your eyes will what? Your eyes will what? See the king in his beauty and view a land. So who will see the beauty of the king? Huh? Okay, yeah, by faith, amen. But according to the scripture, who will see the beauty of the king? Huh? The righteous. It's the righteous that behold the beauty. So if you want to enjoy the beauty of the Lord this month, you want to come. How many of you were just blessed by the encounter that we had with the Lord? God, God is calling us. Yeah, come on, clap for Jesus. God is calling us to righteousness. But listen, listen, God is calling us to righteousness. But I want you to understand something. Righteousness is by faith. Righteousness is by faith. You want this righteousness working, covering your heart, covering your mind, covering your eyes. It's not a willpower thing, it's a faith thing. And you know what that means? You know what that means? Hmm. Let, me show you, let me show you one more thing. 
Psalms 97 verse 2. Let me, sorry, really? <laughs> Please, give me like five minutes, five minutes. I just, I want you to get started. I know we're a little over time. Please, give me just five minutes. Psalms 97 verse 2. Hmm. You want to approach the throne? You want to behold the beauty of the king? Can we read together? One, two, three, let's go. Clouds and darkness are round about him. Righteousness and judgment are the habitation of his throne. You know what that word can be translated there mean? Foundation or basis. The foundation of his throne is righteousness and judgment. How can you, how can you come before that throne without his righteousness? You need it. You want to behold that beauty. You need the righteousness. But this righteousness comes by faith. Romans 3.22 says the righteousness which is of faith. Galatians 5.5 says the Spirit delivered to us the righteousness of faith. And so I want to encourage you. Listen, if you are going to walk in righteousness, you need to be in the Word. Because if you're going to work faith, you need to be in the Word. There is no faith separate from the Word. There's not, it, it can't be. So rather than trying to figure out how do I, how do I use my willpower to stop this? Or how do I limit my exposure? Or how do I stop from getting caught? No, 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 no. Get in the word. Hebrews 1.9 says, you have loved righteousness and hated iniquity. Who loved righteousness? Jesus. And that righteousness gave him anointing. So what does that mean for you? If Jesus loved it, and we are made in his image, I love it too. Say, I love it too. Say, I love righteousness too. So what's your confession? I love righteousness. And I hate iniquity. Why must you love righteousness? So you can behold the beauty. So you can come into his presence. You, you, you know what drives people out of his presence? Is, is sin. Is iniquity. It drives... It, you think it's that God doesn't want you there. Is that people, when they're in the midst of the sin, run from God on their own. They run on their own. What was the first thing Adam did when God was... Who, okay, in the garden, who was pursuing who? God was pursuing Adam. God was calling Adam. God didn't just suddenly stop coming to the garden because Adam sinned. God pursued Adam and Adam hid. Adam ran. Adam was avoiding the beauty because of sin. So what do you do? You go for his righteousness. It says he made him who knew no sin to become sin for us. That we might be made the righteousness of God in Christ. Say I'm the righteousness of God. Say I'm the righteousness of God. Righteousness is reigning in my heart. Righteousness is reigning in my mind. I speak righteousness. I live righteously. Why? Because you love righteousness and hate iniquity. It's a righteousness that comes by faith. So what does that mean? You have to get in the word and then you begin to speak it. You begin to declare it. The ones who come before his thrones are, are the ones who obey the word. How do you obey the word? Joshua 1 8, right? You shall meditate in this book of the law day and night. That way you may be careful to do all that has been written therein. If you want to do, get the word. To do the word, you must get the word. To do the word, you must work the word. Say after me, in the name of Jesus, I love righteousness. I love righteousness. I hate iniquity. I love righteousness. God, even my God, has anointed me. I'm covered. I'm covered. I'm anointed because I love righteousness and I hate iniquity. I hate sin. I hate sin. I love righteousness. In the name of Jesus, rise up to your feet say in the name of Jesus righteousness is taking over my thinking say righteousness righteousness is taking over my thinking, over my thinking. Righteousness, righteousness is transforming my desires right. in the name of Jesus in the name of Jesus by the righteousness of Christ my eyes shall not look my upon a maid in, in the name of Jesus by the righteousness of Christ my eyes will not look upon a maid in 
in the name of Jesus. Say in the name of Jesus. I am the righteousness of God. I am the righteousness of God. Therefore, my ears shall not hear evil. My eyes shall not see evil. In the name of Jesus, my feet, my feet, they are kept from evil. By the righteousness of God, my heart is covered. My heart is protected. In the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, righteousness, righteousness is in my mouth. I shall speak the righteousness of the Lord. In the name of Jesus, I am righteous. I am righteous. In the name of Jesus, I have the righteousness of faith. The righteousness of faith. I put on the new man which is created in righteousness and true holiness in Jesus' name. So every day, every day, you must begin to meditate on the word, speak the word of righteousness. What you don't speak, what you don't declare won't work for you. And it's one thing to come to church, but it's another to become the church of God wherever you go because of the beauty that you carry and the righteousness working in you.